Right, so next session we're going to look at why gender stereotyping is still such an issue for advertisers and how through eliminating stereotypes we can unleash creativity. So here to tell us more, please welcome, with great vocal cords now, Unilever's Executive Vice President of Global Marketing and Head of Global Diver Diversity and Inclusion, Eleni Santo. Before we start, I would like to try something different with you. Imagine if you are scrolling to your social media, Instagram or whatever social media you prefer, and a video starts to play. And in that video, there is a model shaking their hair, and then it opens into their mouth, and then goes to their body. What sort of model are you picturing? What is the gender of this model? What is the age of this model? I'm sure you're thinking about young woman. And if another video starts, and it starts with a car mechanic, what uh, is coming to your mind? What is the picture that comes to your mind? I'm sure it's a mature man. Because these are the images that we are seeing thousand times on TV, isn't it? And why is that? Basically, we all have subconscious associations. We do that without even thinking. We know people through the references that we have available. References that have been conditioning to us since we were little babies. And at the most simple level, we could call those references stereotypes. And how to fight those stereotypes is going to be the focus of my conversation with you today. So, let me introduce myself. I'm Aline Santos. I'm responsible for global marketing and global diversity and inclusion at Unilever. Yes, it's a funny job. I have a marketing job and I have an HR job, but I love it. And Unilever is a company that is more than 100 years old. It is present in 190 countries and it has more than 400 brands. I really hope that if I visit one of your homes, yeah, where you live, I really hope that I find some of our brands in the cabinet of your bathroom. And uh, here I am at uh, this important stage, probably the most important creative stage in this industry, uh, which is Spikes. And here you're going to hear a lot about hyper-personalization, hyper-segmentation. This week you're going to delve into data-driven communication. All sort of things that are super important. But what I really want to focus our attention in this talk is really about creativity. I really want to focus on creativity because all technology in the world cannot make up for poor creative thinking that lacks authenticity, relevance, and the ability to shake culture. These are very important talks for us. But before we get into the details of it, I just wanted to share some of my observations. I think that our industry has been very lazy in tackling stereotypes. It's very easy for us to keep repeating the references again and again and again. Laziness is something that is permeating everything that we do. Lazy ideas, lazy concepts, lazy marketing, lazy scripts. Laziness is not only damaging creativity, but laziness is also losing audiences, killing brands, and more importantly, laziness is hurting society. And that's what I want to really change. Laziness is really sticking with the old stereotypes and references again and again. And if it's like the industry doesn't care, if it's like you know, the industry is just shrugging its shoulders, like this is not important to change stereotypes. But it is important, and we must fight for that. We must change, and we must really remove harmful stereotypes from our advertising portraying more progressive, more authentic representation of people, making society much more progressive and more inclusive, and hopefully making this world less divided as we are seeing today. So today, I'm going to talk to you about unstereotype. Unstereotype is something that we started two years ago. It's a tool that is going to help you to really unleash your creativity and create creative excellence. So let me start with a story. It's a story about a little girl. This is me. And this is me when I was a small kid in Brazil. I was raised in Brazil. And I had the most wonderful childhood. 
I had the loving parents who raised me with a very strong self-esteem. And although I had that world full of possibilities, when I was thinking about my future, I was looking to the references around me. And the references that I had were my mom or my auntie. My mom was a teacher, my aunt was a housewife. So thinking about my future, either I was going to be a teacher or a housewife. A teacher or a housewife. That was my universe. My universe was so limited, that was the size of a child's sandbox. That's where it, I was. But one day, something changed in my life. Something radical happened. There was a movie, a movie that came from Hollywood to Brazil. This movie was from Ridley Scott. The movie was called Alien. And this movie, when it came to Brazil, received a translation that was not very helpful. It was not a good translation like the translators here are doing. The translator translated the alien name to Alini, which is my name. So the movie yeah, uh, it started to, you know, in all the cinemas with the wrong name. And of course, at school, you can imagine, all the kids started to play with me and bully me. Alini the monster, Alini the alien, Alini this, Alini that. And I got very troubled, very troubled. And my mom said to me, you know what? Don't be troubled. Just go and watch the bloody movie and see what's going to happen in this movie. And that's what I've done. I went to the movie and I watched it. And to my surprise, that movie changed my life. It was just a movie, but changed my life. Because it was the first time in my life that I was seeing a new reference about what it takes to be a woman, what it is to be a woman. It was Sergeant Ripley, Sigourney Weaver. She was the hero of the film. She was the leader. She was killing all the monsters. She was super powerful. I've never seen a woman like that. And if it was like, it was like if Sigourney was looking at me and saying, Alini, wake up. You can be whoever you wanted to be. And my universe got completely transformed. Before, my future was in a very small sandbox. And now, after Sergeant Ripley and Sigourney Weaver, I transformed my future into, you know, not a sandbox, but a beach, like an Ipanema beach in Rio de Janeiro. And I was feeling free, and I was feeling powered. It was awesome. It was fantastic. And that gave me a lot of hope in terms of moving forward. But that was a long time ago. Yeah, that was when I was a teenager. If I look to today, and what's happening today, it is so exciting. If you think about the global phenomenon of hashtag me too, or hashtag activism, whatever is the activism, or if you think about this region, what's happening with the Philippines, the women, where they are standing and claiming against the sexiest comments from their president with Babae Aku uh, hashtag. Or if you go to China, and, and, and the leftover women are reclaiming Sheng Nu, or, you know, in India, just legalize homosexuality. So much is going on. Consumers, not brands, are shaping culture. And they are holding us much more accountable than we were ever before. And when I look to this region, my goodness, this is a powerhouse. You should be so proud of being in Asia in this generation, because this is the time for Asia. This is amazing. Asia is really leading everything that's seen, that is related to technology, especially when it comes to mobile behavior. But it's not only that, on innovation as well. If you think about beauty, K-beauty, J-beauty, this is inspiring women all over the world. So much is happening. And I was very excited to come here to talk to you about unstereotype. And I said, first, I need to check how is Asia in terms of unstereotyping their advertising. And I commissioned a work that reviewed only 500 ads, so it's a sample, in China, Indonesia, and in India, just to check what was the level of stereotype or unstereotype that the region was in. And to my surprise, we were less than progressive in Asia. We are not doing well. I'm going to show you some stats from Asia. Unfortunately, only 1% of the advertising in Asia today is showing women as intelligent or as a leader. 1%. Only 0.2% is showing women as funny 
Can you believe that? Only 3% is, is showing women uh, above 40 years old. But it's not only that. No advertising was showing anyone with any kind of disability. And this is 10% of the population around the world. But it's also about men. Only 3% of the advertising was showing men as caring fathers. And of course, there are millions of fathers that are not being represented there. And last but not least, there was no man cooking in advertising. And I was so shocked. I said, my goodness, I cannot recognize the people that I know, especially the cooking thing. I am dreadful at the kitchen. I cannot do anything. I can, actually, I can cook three things. I can make ice. I can make tea. I can make ice and tea. And sometimes it doesn't taste good, yeah? So I'm a total disaster. But my, my sons and my husband, they are the ones who are doing the cooking, but yet not represented uh, in, in advertising. So what's going on? I ask myself, where are those people? Where are the Muslim ladies wearing their hijabs? Where are they? Where are the, the same-sex parents that are not represented in advertising? Where, where are the plus-size trailblazers? Where are those people that we know, that are in our neighborhoods, in our offices, that are not represented in advertising? And again, I ask myself why this is happening. And the only, only reason that I can imagine is laziness. I think that I have been lazy yeah? in the past. I have to admit I have been lazy. And probably among the most creative people sitting here today, some of you have been lazy as well in terms of showing different references of people in the communication and content that you have been creating. I think we should fight this, and I think we should be excited to show different people with much more authentic uh, sides of them. I think that this is going to be something important for us, not only to create a more progressive society, but a much more inclusive society. And that's why I wanted to focus on unstereotype today. Unstereotype is a movement that we started internally at Unilever two years ago. And sometimes you start something internally in your company and nobody cares. But in this case, everybody was excited about that. There was an immediate traction coming from the marketeers and from the agencies. Everybody wanted to do something about it. Everybody felt that it was about time for us to start shaking the quality of the communication when it comes about uh, stereotypes. And we started the journey. And there, what have we done? Well, first we started instigating what was the insights that our brands were rooted. Were those insights rooted in a human truth or were they limited into a kind of a silly demographic like gender? We started asking ourselves, what is the role of people that we are portraying in advertising? Are we portraying their ambitions, their achievements, their aspirations, or, they, or are we portraying only their responsibilities? When we thought about their personalities, are we just showing that very bland facade, or are we going to show the three-dimensional sides of each of us? And when we were talking about appearance, we wanted to be much more uh, diverse, non-critical, much more positive about how to show appearance. And slowly but surely, we started to change. We are in a journey. We are also making mistakes. But this has provoked a lot of traction in the business and fantastic results. One of the brands that had an amazing result with unstereotype, and now it's a global phenomenon, um, is, uh, is Brook Bond Red Label. This is one of my favorite brands in the Unilever portfolio. The purpose of this brand is the most beautiful purpose. It talks about making the world a more inclusive place through a cup of tea. So putting people together that never sit together to have a cup of tea and see that they have a lot of things in common. Tackling taboos that are important to be tackled in society. And uh, two years ago, we got the Grand Prix in Cannes with this campaign that I'm super proud. This is a campaign where we were tackling uh, the very important taboo of being transgender. And this was a campaign that we ran in a very conservative country, India. We knew it was going to be a very challenging and risky uh, attempt to talk about this in India. 
but we did it. We created the first band, transgender band, in the world, well, sorry, in India, uh, for the first time, to talk about the importance of being more inclusive in society. And there was a revolution there. I have to say, we lost some consumers, but also we gained many more. And these new consumers that we got are absolutely amazing. And they have been lifting the brand. The brand now is running and growing three times faster than before. So besides having this amazing Grand Prix, which is all good for all of us, I think more importantly are the changes that we started uh, to ignite in society. And there was one letter that really moved me, a letter from a father. A father who wrote to us saying how much he was grateful to everything that we've done. Because through our campaign and the change uh, about the conversation uh, on, on transgender, he got excited and he got ignited to reconvene with his son, who was a transgender, someone that he didn't talk for 20 years. So this kind of things really make you wake up every morning and say, my goodness, I need to do more of that. And, and, and Brooke Bond is tackling many things. Uh, the latest campaign that you're going to see in India now is talking about interreligious differences. Uh, there's another campaign about HIV. There are lots of interesting things going on. But again, important to be mentioned, yeah, we are seeing the results back into the brand. But it's not only Brook Bond, uh, many other brands are doing that. Before I go to the next brand, let me just delight you with a very sweet film that we've done uh, that is called Peace One Day. I love this film. Um, but you know, talking about stereotypes, sometimes people say, oh, it's all about women. No, it's not only about women. It's about men, it's about nationality, it's about religion, it's about age, it's about all the stereotypes that we face in the world. And if you think about men, oh my gosh, it's not easy to be a man these days, isn't it? Because, you know, for you to be a man, you have to be affluent, you have to be rich, you have to be sporty, you have to be winning at Momo, and, uh, and you have to have the six packs, yeah? So, you, you know, it's almost impossible to be a man these days. And this narrative is also tired, tired, uh, tiring, and uh, we have to change this narrative. This is something that we also have to be concerned. Men also uh, has to change the way uh, you know, it's being stereotyped on, on any content uh, that we produce uh, these days. And um, one of our brands decided to tackle that and decided to, decided to talk more about how to represent men in a more human way, showing other sides of men, showing men in a more vulnerable uh, sort of uh, profile uh, and behavior, uh, showing emotions. And this was uh, the Dove Plus Care, uh, Dove Man Plus Care brand. This is a campaign that we ran. This is a film that we've done uh, for future dads. So here we have, you know, true people, real people, real dads, talking about how was the emotion of having their first babies. Let's have a look on this film. I couldn't really comprehend me being a parent, me being a dad. How's that gonna be? Dear future dads. Agapiti melodiki pateres, querido futuro papai. Children, as they're coming into the world, they need that time with both their parents. 
I remember when she came out, it felt like time stopped. And she just started like looking around. It was exciting and, and scary. Do whatever you can to take time off. You're never gonna regret it. You're never gonna get it back. There's a lot of great bonding that happens in those first couple of weeks and months. I knew I just had to be there. I had to be there no matter what. First time your kid runs at you from daycare, and they're like, daddy, daddy, daddy. It's like, I'm a puddle. You on me. When my daughter tells me I'm her best friend, that's the best part. I'm her best friend. When my kid just walks up to me and hugs me for no reason, I never felt that in my life until I had him, you know, so it's nice. I might need a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, good. So with, with this campaign, we got so much traction, so much feedback from consumers as well, people incentivating us to move forward on this campaign, that we decided to do a study to understand um, paternity leave, which is a subject that you know, many companies are not yet facing and tackling. And with that study, we discovered lots of things. One of the things that we discovered is that companies who have a good policy on paternity leave has the policy, but people are not taking the paternity leave. So men are still afraid of taking the paternity leave because they are concerned about all the comments and again, stereotypes that people are going to start creating about them. But we pushed further. And one of the advantages of me working on marketing and diversity and inclusion at Unilever is that at Unilever, I said, okay, let's do this in Unilever. Let's have a paternity leave in 190 countries, even in countries where this is not required by law. Let's have it in all the countries. And let's make this a kind of a mandatory thing that people should em embrace. If they don't want to embrace paternity leave, they should have a very serious conversation with their, uh, with their bosses. We need to know why they are not taking this amazing opportunity of being closer to their dear new babies uh, and you know, be a, a little bit away from the company. And this is starting now at Unilever and we are having a lot of good traction and amazing feedback, not only from men, but from women. Because at the moment that you give this benefit for men, you start also to help women and you start to make the environment much more balanced as well. But enough about uh, DAF. Let me talk about something that is very critical. And if there is anything that I want you to remember is this. Doing unstereotype advertising is something that is not only good for society. It's not only uh, a business issue. It is something that uh, you should take as an imperative for your business because this brings results, tangible results. We have tested more than a thousand ads in advertising with, with this program. And um, every time we have progressive advertising, we have 25% more branded impact. So I'm not talking about small things, I'm talking about impact, and I'm talking about 25% more branded impact. Every time you have a new reference that people are not expecting, yeah, you have more impact. But not only that, you are increasing your sales. Your purchase intention is 18% higher than it used to be. 18% purchase intention. And last but not least, you increase the level of credibility on your brands by 21% bringing the trust back to your brands. So this is a win-win. This is good for business, this is good for brands, this is good for society. This is something that we all should embrace. And with that, I would like to show you a last video, which I really love, and this is coming from this region. This is coming from Thailand. This is the challenge of a boy making his hair grow. Let's have a look. ใครๆชอบบอกว่าเด็กผู้ชายต้องตัดชั้นให้สั้นแต่ถ้าเด็กคนนั้นไม่ได้อยากเป็นผู้ชายล่ะฉันไม่เคยเข้าใจเธอเลยอย่างอื่นก็มีให้เล่นตั้งเยอะทำไมถึงเล่นไม่เหมือนคนอื่นแต่บางทีคนอื่นก็อยากเล่นด้วยเราไปให้เขาแก้งหีได้ยังไงพ่อไม่ชอบแล้วทำตัวให้สมกับเป็นลูกผู้ชายด้วยยกมือขึ้นมาอันนี้คือการเธอก็เลยแบ่งโลกของเธอออกเป็นสองใบตอนมัธยมอ่ะเธอรอพับตายเพื่อให้ฉันยาวขึ้นเร็วๆโลกใบแรกอ่ะโคตรเป็นเธอเลยส่วนใหญ่อ่ะสนุกเดี๋ยวทนไว้เอาแล้วจะได้อยู่แล้ว
เธอร้องให้นะก็แค่ส่วนใหญ่สวยหน่อยลงสนอใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมใช่ไหมฉันไม่เข้าใจเธอเลยถ้าเธอตัดฉันให้สั้นลงพ่อเธอก็คงสบายใจขึ้นมาดูอะไรนี่ดิแต่ที่เธอทำอยู่มันตรงข้ามกันเลยพ่อเตรียมตัวมาใหญ่เต็มที่ล็อกไปประกวดมาล็อกก็ไม่เคยถามพ่อนะคะว่าอยากได้รูปเป็นตุดหรือเปล่าเราก็ใช้ชีวิตแบบหลบๆสั้นซ่อนมาโดยตลอดก็อยากให้คุณพ่อได้เห็นแล้วก็ได้รับรู้ก็อยากให้เขาได้ภูมิใจค่ะในสิ่งที่เราเป็นยินดีด้วยนะลูกยาวขึ้นเท่าไหร่เธอยิ่งกล้าเป็นตัวเองมากขึ้นทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนทุกคนUh, we are very proud of Sunsuk and what they've done here. So, just finishing my presentation, wrapping up with all those amazing results. What you and Liva decided to do was to share and share and share all this knowledge that we have accumulated in the last year, two years actually. And the last year we decided to launch with United Nations uh, Women uh, a, a new alliance, the Unstereotype Alliance. This is an alliance where we invited even our fierce competitors to join us and to start discussing how we, as an industry, can get together and learn together. In this area, we decided that we are not going to compete. In this area, what we decided is that we are going to be united, fighting stereotypes. The Unstereotype Alliance objective is to eliminate stereotypes from advertising, making this world a more progressive and more uh, inclusive world. So for that, I will humbly ask you, please, Asia, we need your thought leadership. We need your help. We need to stop being lazy. We need to unleash the potential of our brands. We need to unleash creativity. We need to stop with all this nonsense and leave stereotypes aside and put humanity first. So please join me. On unstereotype. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much to Alenia. I hope you do join her on such a great initiative. Thank you very much for coming this morning. So she will be over in the Meet the Speakers session taking place in the PwC Meetups Lounge just over there. The session with Wendy Clark was fantastic. So do go over there and ask your questions.